hopefully I'm in frame here because uh, I can't I'm very limited with <laughs> filming myself in my car I have a proper mount but you know I don't want to deal with that so hi <laughs> but yeah I'm on my way to my mom's house uh, I got a bright idea this morning to um, make a little painting for my sister. Today's her birthday, um, but tomorrow we're going over to her place to do like a little Thanksgiving, um, Friendsgiving, Thanksgiving thing, and also celebrate her and another friend's birthday. So um, the painting that I'm going to do requires some reference uh, photos, and it's going to be a painting of her when she was younger because she really um, is drawn to the concept of like childhood. Yeah, so my mom's house is the place to go to get any sort of old childhood photography. Luckily she has lots. you. Yeah, that's you. <laughs> that is <answer's> so cute! It's October, and as many of us art people are very aware, October is the month of uh, agreeing to a daily art challenge while you're in a good mood in September, and then um, a week in, you're falling behind on all the prompts. Um, so that's where I'm at. I'm. I'm just working on this um, this painting that I'm doing for my sister that I started yesterday. Um, just 
putting on some finishing touches, a little caption in Japanese, as I do. Um, but yeah, hi. <laughs> I, uh, I haven't really touched my camera for the past two weeks. I made that last vlog in the beginning of September. And then I went to Montreal with some friends. Um, thought about vlogging then. I brought my camera and everything. vlogging that. Um, so for this past week-ish, um, I've been attempting Magtober, which is the uh, blank-tober drawing prompt by um, Mags Monroe on Instagram. And it's been cool, but goddamn, it's, there's nothing like a drawing challenge slash um, drawing prompts of like having to do, to do things every day to like really make you um, question your style and what the fuck you're doing with your art. Um, I feel like doing something for every day uh, makes me want to experiment and stuff. Um, but the urgency of like the daily deadlines make me put out things that I'm not 100% um, satisfied with. Uh, and that put, puts me in a weird uh, mind state or a weird like way of viewing my art. Um, I don't know if it's a good thing. It, it probably is like a good thing since I'm like feeling uncomfortable and challenging myself in that way, but <sighs> boy is it exhausting. I tell you, and it's only been like a week. Now say straight ahead. And then, on the right, no, on the left,
feel like even though it's like completely based on uh, my own like comparisons to where other people are or what I feel like I could be doing at this age, um, I feel like the age part is just um, added pressure to the choice piece. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's, it's dumb. <laughs> Cause yeah, like I know that it's all based on like if I was the only person in the world, like I, this wouldn't be a thought because there would be nobody else to um, see me fail or perceive me failing and potentially judge me for it. Um, but I know that like in reality, it's basically that way. Cause like everybody's like too busy feeling like they're a failure. Um, I, when I did the worksheet, I was like feeling pretty skeptical because I felt like what I felt anxious about, like couldn't be solved in the way that like you could solve like stage fright or something or like get to the core of it. Um, but by the end of it, um, writing that like final uh, rational thought piece or whatever, um, I was crying because it like really felt like a very big step in like being able to realize that and um, yeah I felt like something was changing there. Okay. Great, thank you. Bye bye. 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 Man, therapy is so good. <laughs> um, yeah, I just had a session. That was my fourth session with my therapist. Um, and I just feel, I just feel so good about myself to even say that, <laughs> you know, just talk to my therapist about X or Y. Um, I realize how much of a privilege it is to to work on myself like this. Um, that was a thing that kept me from signing up to therapy for the longest time was the price tag and it's a lot of money. Um, especially when like you haven't you haven't tried it before, or it, it's hard to justify like that much of your income being allocated to something that isn't tangible. Um, but yeah, it's so 100% worth it to me. Um, yeah, I just so much impact already a month in and I'm very very grateful for that um so I need to take what the fuck Oh my god. <laughs> there's like a there's like a magpie war going out on outside. Oh, did you hear that? Bro, I swear these magpies have turf wars in my neighborhood. Like they're all always all over the house. Um anyways, wow, got distracted. Um 
I need to take some feet pics uh, and I can explain. So I'm working on this piece um, and I need reference for a bare foot because I can kind of like guesstimate or like draw out the shape of like a covered foot, like if, if it were a sock. But that doesn't really make sense with what she's wearing unless she's like wearing um, tights or something, which is a little weird. Yeah, typically when I'm drawing something and I run into uh, an issue that needs reference or I need the help of, of some sort of reference because I don't trust myself to just um, draw it from my imagination, which is totally fine. You know, there's like, I feel like the world in general is over this now, but there used to be a stigma uh, like against using references, um, which really does not make sense because using references is how you make your art as good as possible or, you know, as accurate to real life as possible. Um, so anything that you can do to make your art better is, you know, fair. Go for it. Um, so yeah, anyways, usually when I need reference, I don't like to scour the internet for it. If I can like um, take it myself because I know exactly the angle that I need. very weird but you know you do what you gotta do for the art um but yeah i just take a video usually and try and get the angle as good as i can and then have my sketch on the side or whatever reference on the side and then just try to um scan through until i find the right like angle i guess which like that's not bad but yeah, anyways, anything close enough is usually like good enough to use. I just need to see how the anatomy works. Hi, from across the room. <laughs> um, I, um, I'm holding a mic. I just got new lav mics and I wanted to give her, give her a test. So that's what I'm doing right now. So, yes, I talked a little about, I talked a little bit about therapy, um, earlier, and yeah, I've been doing therapy for about a month, and I feel like especially the past, like, few sessions have really been huge in terms of, um, me figuring out how to do things, um, and how to like push myself to to stop being stagnant in terms of the things that I want to do. Um, it's embarrassing because I feel like I've made a lot of videos where I speak on certain things that I have planned for the future or things that I want to do. Um, and they don't play out. And that's fine. Literally nobody's like keeping count or keeping track of me. Um, but I'm getting pretty sick of it myself. Um, I'm going to be 25 in a few months. Uh, and that's, that's a big number. And I feel like, I don't know, I'm very aware of my entire life up until now. And the past couple years have been huge for me in terms of, um, you know, Im improving myself and becoming more of a person that I want to be. Um, but there's still that piece that just never caught on with YouTube or making art consistently in a, in a way that I feel like is impactful and in, in a way that makes me feel like I'm doing everything that I want to do. 
Um, so I've been looking a lot into why I'm so afraid to do the things that I want to do and why I'm, why, why I have a tendency to, to just put them off forever. And, uh, it's partly, uh, you know, just procrastinating in general, but the procrastination, uh, stems from a fear of something fear of whether that's fear of judgment or fear of mm, it's all it all it all comes back to fear of a fear of judgment i think because um whether or not the thing that i make is good enough it's all based on outside input and it's dumb and i know that um and i'm getting sick of it and I feel like that's a good thing because, you know, it's, I feel silly being worried about these things that really should not matter to me, especially, you know, becoming a fully, having a, a fully developed brain and being an adult. Um, I should be able to do the things that I want to do fearlessly and not let my perceived fears because really my fears are you know not real threats to me at all um letting those get in the way of me living my damn life and living it in a way that is the most fulfilling to me and the most um makes me the happiest so yeah, I'm still completely terrified, but at least I'm aware now. Because before I was just coasting and I was unaware. I knew something was wrong, but I didn't want to look into it because of that fear, I guess. Um, so anyways... There's something about this that's making me want to procrastinate. And, uh, I don't know what that is. I feel like it might be because I'm trying, like, a new style. I'm trying to make this, like, mimic a specific kind of, um, Japanese art print, like, woodblock, um, or, like, ukiyo-e. And I've never done it before, and, um, Took my sweet time on the line art, making sure everything looked good. And now that I've gotten to the part where I filled in all the colors and I'm ready to try and emulate this style, my brain is like, what else can I do today? <laughs> so uh, I'm glad that I'm aware of that because this is like seemingly a not not very hard task. Like, I can definitely finish this piece today. And I was actually supposed to finish it like yesterday or the day before that. Um, but I didn't because I didn't want to finish it and it not turn out the way that I want it to turn out, I guess. Um, I heard some advice recently it was, uh, I think I was like Googling videos uh, on, or sorry, I was YouTubing videos on how to not procrastinate anymore or why people procrastinate. And one dude said that um, a good way to not procrastinate something that you really have to do is to make that thing the only thing you can do. So like completely removing any kind of other distractions from uh, from getting the task at hand done um, because humans in the face of boredom um, if that one thing is the only option of alleviating any boredom you will 
do that a hundred times before you just sit there and do nothing, which is hard to implement in the real world because obviously you're not, um, you can't just like lock yourself in a room and give yourself literally no other option, but you can put your phone away and purposefully not watch any Netflix or listen to any music while you do said tax task. Um, which is what I usually do when I'm working on art or some other thing. So um, I think this is a good opportunity to try that uh, theory out and see how it goes. <laughs> Yeah, that feels good. <laughs> um, I'm going to treat myself to just relaxing for the rest of the night because I'm proud of myself for doing this even though I wanted to procrastinate. Oh, you can't get your carrot. Okay. What can I do for you, bud? You gotta keep trying. Hey? You gotta keep trying. What's this? What's this?
man. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I, uh, I filmed a video today um, and felt very proud of myself for doing all that. Um, so I'm working on editing it right now and I fucking, my audio file corrupted. Um, so yeah, I was, I was filming myself against a big white wall, I had a whole setup over there. Um, and as you can see, I have my little mic here because I know that my camera microphone is shit. And it's also, it was also like pretty far away from me when I was filming. So I knew I couldn't rely on it, hence my, my mic, um, but yeah. For some reason, the audio file like died and it's just like a second of static, which is awful. Uh, so I, I tried, you know, fixing the audio that I had from the camera and I thought I was maybe getting by okay, but listening to like voiceovers on these uh, Premiere Pro tutorials, trying to like figure out to do something else. Oh my God, it sounds awful. <laughs> ah. So um, yeah, I think I'm gonna have to reshoot that, uh, that piece, which is a bummer obviously, but it's, it's not as bad as, you know, my brain was making it out to be in the first second that I realized that the audio was trash. Um, yeah, it's cool. I'll do it. Oh, man. It's such a struggle. Uh, I, like, I want to make YouTube videos. <laughs> um, and I've been wanting to make them forever. And I know that it's not enough to just want to because that's what I've been doing for years and years and years. And I know that when things like this happen, I just need to work through them and redo things that I need to redo and not give up on things just because something goes bad or just because something isn't up to par. Um, I keep reminding myself that if I want something to happen that hasn't happened before, I need to do something that I've never done before. And what I've never done before is be consistent with videos, obviously. Um, so yeah, learning this lesson day by day and trying, being very aware that like I could just stop and I could just, you know, watch Netflix and then go to bed tonight but I'm deciding to not do that because I want to fucking do this. So, she's trying, she's learning. I feel like a baby talking like this because like, yeah, obviously like you have to do the thing to get the thing that you want. I just have a, I just have a dumb baby brain, I guess, that just wants things to happen but I know that that does not happen. Um, anyways. It's embarrassing admitting that, but we stay vulnerable. <laughs>